The Hawkeye Wrestling Club Showdown Open. We'll have it right here. Stream live on Track Wrestling Sunday, November 1st. Great card. One of those matches, Pat Lugo and Matthew Kolodzik. And, and Pat joins us now from Iowa City. Pat, the first question I have for you, I saw this someplace, but if you could give us the story once again, the story on your tattoo. Uh, yeah, so I, I got it when I was in high school, and um, basically I, was, I just wanted a tattoo, so I went, went to my dad, and, and um, I was talking to him, and I'm thinking I'm going to get like a half a sleeve, right? That's what I told him, and he just told me to get the full thing. And then, um, so I kind of went from there. Uh, we didn't know what to be like. I didn't know what I wanted yet. So I um, uh, kind of looked at a few pictures here and there and put stuff together. Um, the tattoo guy uh, uh, named Troy, rest in peace. Um, he he uh, tattooed by Lou down in uh, Miami. Um, came up with some ideas with me and, uh, you know, moving from there. I, I started off and then um, my dad and my, my, my little brother followed. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Pretty good short story, but yeah. You, are you planning on getting any more? Um, yeah, I, I want some more, but I'm, I'm not sure what I want yet. I mean, I'm, stop, I'm still like in the air with a lot of stuff. Uh, man, I might stick with the same thing. I might not, so I don't know. You came to Iowa City from Edinburgh. You grew up in, in South Florida. Describe the differences, if you can, between Florida and Iowa City. Um, it's a big difference. Uh, the people are different, you know, the – the weather's obviously different. Um, the wrestling is different. Um, everything's different. You know, I have just people that like, like I joke around with now. Even like the traffic's different. Because if you ever been down in Miami, the, the traffic there is completely different. But like, yeah, everything's. I feel like everything's more of a fast paced Miami. Everything's like moving, moving fast paced. There's no time to like relax and chill. You know. But here in Iowa City, um, definitely easier to stay out of trouble. Definitely, uh, you know, slower pace. You know, I think it's better. For like training wise, for sure, better better uh, place to train, better place to stay focused, and this is a better place to uh, grow, you know, as an individual. Some great coaches, of course, on that Iowa Hawkeye staff. Tell me about the the special handshake with you and Tom. Uh, so yeah, it started one day. Um, Tom, I think it was, it was like morning practice one day. Tom just gave me uh, one finger. He went like this, gave me like one finger. And then I told him, I don't think that's strong enough. So I gave him, I gave him two fingers and it, it just kind of stuck, you know? And uh, it was a, um, one time, Cameron, Michael Cameron tried to do it to Tom and I saw it. And I was like, hey, 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 that's, that's me and you right there. Tom, like, can back, back off. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty, much the, pretty much the story on that. So every time, you know, um, we like shake hands. I just, we just go with the two fingers. I didn't pay that close attention right before you were getting ready to, to toe the line in big matches. Would you guys do that like in the corner before you go out? Yeah. It's just, just, a, um, just real quick in the corner. Um, something that like, you know, like I think it subconsciously builds my confidence, you know, just to, just to know that, you know, I got backup with me, you know? So like, I'm not out there alone, you know, Tom, and it's not just Tom. I got, like, the whole coaching staff. I, mean, I got Tom, Terry, Morningstar, Telford, everyone, you know, behind me, and especially my teammates. And um, I think I think it's cool. I think I, I like it. Uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure he likes it. And, uh, yeah, pretty much it. Big match with you and Matthew Kolodzik. Uh, looking forward to watching that one on November 1st. Have you ever wrestled Kolodzik before? Yeah, I we wrestled him probably, like, three or four times. Um, I only wrestled him once in freestyle and, like, twice or three times in uh folk style and we've, we've been back and forth here and there uh he's a tough tough guy uh you know definitely gotta go out go out go out there you know sh stay sharp stay focused and you know stay confident and i believe i can get the win where do you think that match is won or lost pat when you look at the uh the matchup uh it's right here man it's in between in between my two ears uh it's it's if i just believe in myself uh you know, there should be no one, there should be nobody that can beat me, you know? Like, so stay confident, stay, stay, uh, stay calm, you know? Uh, a lot of times, a lot of anxiety builds up, you know? It takes a, a strong mentally person to push that anxiety away and, you know, just, just stay in your own lane, you know, focus on the things that you can control. Where do you think from a mental side, Pat, you develop the most strength in your mindsets uh, in the last several years? Um, I mean, I don't, that's kind of a tough question. Uh, sure. I mean, 
I think just my confidence has grew. I mean, I, I visualize a lot more stuff now. You know, the more I visualize it, the more it happens. And, um, and I practice that. I practice that just as much as I practice my reps when I wrestle, you know, like my high crotch. You know, I'm practicing getting my hand raised. I'm practicing my walkout towards the, um, to, to the mat. You know, I'm practicing, you know, everything. You know, I practice everything. So when I'm there in that moment, I'm used to it, you know. So it just, it's just like it flows, you know. It just flows and, you know, it feels good. What's the final thing you tell yourself before you toe the line? I'm the best in the world. I tell myself I'm the best in the world. No one can beat me. I look at myself every day and, uh, after practice and tell myself, tell myself that in that mirror, in the mirror in Carver. I mean, uh, yeah, in Carver, uh, we have like a mirror in like in our weight room. You know, I just look myself in the mirror and talk to myself positive thoughts. And um, that might seem like silly to a lot of people, or you might might seem like you know, oh, that doesn't work. But like that, that's just as important or more important than you know than working out, than running, than, than lifting and all that stuff. When it comes to freestyle, I know Kolodzik's had, had some success through the different age levels. You wrestled a lot of freestyle uh, growing up? Yeah, I actually started wrestling freestyle and then I went into folk style. So uh, yeah, when I started when I was four, I started freestyle. And then um, I think like a couple years later, I started folk style. But yeah, I've, I went to Fargo. I've you know, done all that stuff, freestyle and Greco actually. So. I mean, at the end of the day, wrestling is wrestling. You know, I can't change my style up because the different type of uh, match I'm in, either it's freestyle, Greco, or folk style. You know, staying with the same mindset, staying with the same goal, and that's pretty much it. I'm always curious, Pat, somebody's journey. Uh, you came from, from South Dade High School, won a couple of state titles, mm -hmm. uh, and then went to Edinburgh. Uh, why was Edinburgh the right decision at that time for you? So at, at that time, Edinburgh was, I think, the best decision for me because at the time, they just got third at Nationals. They had, the, like, a lot of good guys around my weight. Dave Habit, Mitchell Port, AJ Shop. You know, those guys were top three, top five in the country at the time. And um, it was a no-brainer for me. I, I didn't really care what the surroundings were, were like. You know, I didn't care if I was in negative 20 degrees or 120 degrees. I just wanted to win, you know what I mean? So I was, found a place with a good coach. Uh, Coach Tim Flynn and Cliff Moore, uh, those were my coaches at the time. And I was just like, man, let's go. I'm ready to go. I don't care. Like like I said, I don't care. If, <laughs> like Edinburgh's a small place. Um, and Miami, where I'm from, Homestead, Florida, is a, is a really big place. A lot, big, big cultural difference. But that stuff didn't really matter to me. You know, what really mattered to me was just winning. So, What other schools were you looking at? You go on other visits? Uh, I actually just went on – one other visit and which was and they don't even have the wrestling program anymore is grand canyon university sure uh, yeah i was in arizona so i went on that one and then i went i went to um i went on edinburgh after and after i went to edinburgh man i had three more visits to go to but i'm the type of person like if i know what i want and i see it right in front of me like i just you know I'm, I'm i don't want to waste time you know i want to get right to it and i felt like edinburgh at the time was um you know, the place for me, like I said. So I wanted to get to work right away. I had other school, um, like Iowa State, I think a uh, um, couple other schools. I can't remember. But, um, but yeah, I, I actually, like, almost, like, planned a visit with them. And I told those coaches, like, look, I think I'm just going to go to Edinburgh. Uh, I respect, you know, um, the offer. But this, I think this place is the right, this is the right place for me. And you started as a true freshman, correct? Yeah, I started a true freshman. I, and I told uh, Coach Flynn at the time that I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, I, I, I can redshirt, but, like, I'm ready now. I feel like I was mentally strong as a true freshman. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't scared of anyone. I didn't care who was in front of me. I just wanted to wrestle. I had Mitchell Port train with me every day. So I wasn't really nervous or scared of anyone because Mitchell Port was and still is a, is a bad dude. So... Um, why would I get nervous if I'm wrestling someone like, you know, um, Zane Rutherford at the time or Brandon Sorensen was there too. Um, just laid me on maze, you know, I had Mitchell Port with me. So, you know, I, I, I know what though, I know what the best guys, um, in the country felt like in practice. Yeah. You had a great true freshman season. You went over 30 matches, uh, third at the, at the conference tournaments, make the blood round. You know, when you when you look back, I mean, that's a that is tough to do as a true freshman. It's tough to do 
uh, any year you're in college, what did you learn about yourself? And, and when did you really have it click where, hey, I, can, I belong with these guys? Um, I mean, I just – it was a lot to do with the coaching staff. They built my confidence. And um, it wasn't – I feel like maybe my freshman year that, yes, I wanted to win. I wanted to be a national a champ. And I, I knew I can, like, All-American. I think it was after I wrestled – um, I'm pretty sure B.J. Clagan from Ryder. He is all, a, a previous All-American, and um, I beat him. And I'm like, man, I'm I'm there with the best guys, you know. And even in practice, like I said, I had Mitchell Port, and I would go, I would like bang with Mitchell Port in practice. And Mitchell Port was a, a two-time national finalist, and um, I was like, man, if I can bang with him, I can bang with these guys, you know. So it, it's all it's all in between the ears for me, you know. Um, the weight control my shape and all the other stuff, the technique comes, comes um, after, you know, my confidence. So once I build that confidence, um, then everything else follows. And then, you know, there's no, there, there should be no reason why the next guy can beat me. You stay in touch with Mitchell? No, not really, man. I mean, I wish, I wish I did. But um, after I, after I left Edinburgh, we, we kind of all fell out a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, I haven't talked to him in years. So he, he's a cool dude. Love him. And, you know, we, we're really close. And, um, but, yeah, I haven't spoken to him in years. One of my weaknesses, Pat, probably my biggest weekend weakness is I am not good at difficult conversations. If I see conflict, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a work in progress for me. I just, I'm just not very good at it. You had another solid season at Edinburgh before you transferred to Iowa City. I can only assume, you know, talking with Coach Flynn, you know, difficult conversation. What, uh, what was, what was that like? Man, it was. If if I put my, if I remember it now, I'll, all I remember is my back sweating the whole time. I was, man, it was like, when I was in his office and I talked to him face to face, man to man. I told him what I had to tell him, and um, that's between me and him. And you know, I mean, yeah, it was a hard conversation to have, of course, because at the time. Um, yeah, I had a good freshman and sophomore year, and and he wanted me to stay with him in his program, and and I just kind of wanted to part ways, you know. So I kind of wanted to better myself, not no disrespect to him or Edinburgh or anyone out there, but um, but yeah, I just feel like at the time I just like I wanted to better myself and I had to go to better places to give me a better opportunity for not just for wrestling but for the future and and all this stuff. I. I mean, I think I made the right decision. Um, a lot of people around me say I made the, I made the right decision, but um, and I hope he also thinks I made the right decision too. You know, I hope there's no black, bad blood there, and and yeah, it was a hard hard uh, hard talk for sure. So why University of Iowa? What was that? You know, what was that path like to getting to uh, Iowa City? Um, so it was a hard path. I mean. I was going back and forth trying to get my release here and there to talk to talk to the schools, but uh, once I got my release, um, same exact thing, man. With with my freshman, with my um, senior year of high school, I'm um, only went on two visits, so I only went on one visit. So like, once I was able to talk to all these other schools, um, I have five more visits I can do, but I only went on one, which was Iowa. And same thing, like I knew this is what I wanted. Brandon Sorensen was finished up his senior year. I I redshirt. And I, I I come in so like I got Tom and Terry Brands Olympic champ world champs in my room every day so um, and it wasn't just something that I knew I wasn't gonna be handed to I know I had to fight for my spot I know that I had I know I had to um, earn my respect um, in the wrestling room and um, so yeah I mean go to work every day and you know go about my business and yeah I feel like I was the best fit for me that the uh, coaches teammates uh, the people the, the, the coach there was this is awesome I just felt like I could this is like a place I can live for for the next live like live there for the next four to five years anything specific Pat that stands out from your first interaction with uh, coach Tom Brands um I mean when I first met him it was at uh I can't even remember I think I think we're at dinner I mean a breakfast actually breakfast went to the uh, a uh, breakfast, breakfast place, and it wasn't even about wrestling. Like we didn't even talk about wrestling. We, it was just like straight jokes all the time, and that kind of threw me off guard. But like, 
um, I liked it. So it was more relaxed. It was more, um, you know, I kind of went there tense a little bit. I didn't know what what to expect, but uh, they uh, definitely broke the ice, broke the ice good, and you know, I was I loved it. So that's it's pretty cool. Carver Hawkeye Arena is like hallowed ground. It's like Yankee Stadium in baseball. Yeah. Passionate, educated fan base. What do you remember your the first experience uh, taking the mat inside Carver? Um, my first time, of course, I was nervous. I mean, I had never, like, wrestled in, like a do me in front of that, that many people before. And, um, you know, a lot a lot, a lot of um, people were kind of expecting me to come out the gate strong and, it, it, like, put a lot of pressure on myself. I'm not going to lie. I felt like I was a freshman again. And um, I had a battle through that throughout the whole year. And that, like, I feel I definitely I can tell it took a toll on my wrestling. Um, I didn't have that much confidence when I first put on that Iowa singlet. You know, I try to be someone I wasn't really. You know, I try to be like fast pace, fast mind, fast this, fast that, and that's not really who I am. I'm more chill, calm guy. You know, um, I kind of like try to take the rest of the match, and I didn't let it come to me. This this past year, I let it I let it come to me. I let it let it flow a little more, and um. I had fun. I had a lot more fun this year. I had a, a lot less stress, a lot less anxiety, a lot less. Like I just felt like this was like this is why I'm here. Like my my senior year, like was more more fun. Like it was a lot of fun. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a lot of fun, a lot, a lot less stress. I mean, the weight cut was nothing. The the um the opponents. Uh, I used to get like antsed up, all antsy about it. Now I'm just like whatever, man. Show me the next guy, you know. So that's pretty much it, yeah. And you had a, a phenomenal season. Uh, you win the Midlands. At that time, I believe Austin O'Connor from North Carolina, you picked him apart a little bit. I think he was number one. You go on, you win a Big Ten title. You were going to be the number one seed at the NC tournament. Uh, not to rub, you know, salt in the wound, because that's got to be just a, a tough pill to swallow. Uh, I don't know if it's something you ever really get over either. I mean, do you, do you still think about that quite a bit, or are you one of those guys that really can put it in the rearview mirror? Honestly, I really don't give a damn about it no more. I mean, like, I don't really care about it. Like, people come up to me, and I'm just like, yeah, 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 cool. And, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I'm kind of – I'm, like, glad it happened to me because, like, I, first, I've been through worse in my life, and I know this is just another stepping stone that, that you know, that life's going to put in front of me that I got to get over, you know. And um, I also believe that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. So, I mean, this is going to, this is, this, that happened for a reason. So, I mean, this, this made me stronger mentally, physically, and gave me extra motivation. So, if you ask me now, I'm happy it happened. You know, I, I'm thankful it happened because I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. I'm just going to, you know, put it, put it in the rear view and, you know, keep going. And that's the type of person I'm at. I'm not, I'm not the type of person to dwell on moments like that. You know, the more I dwell, the weaker I get. So, I'm happy it happened. So. I thank you for having me on. Yeah. If you could have a conversation with yourself when you were a senior in high school, because you've had a, a pretty interesting journey, ups and downs, a little bit of everything, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself this, worry less and have more fun, for sure. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect going into college. I knew, like, hard, hard, working hard is easy. Like, working hard is easy. Like, if a coach tells you to work hard, that's easy to figure out. But it, it's hard for a coach to tell you um, to, like, how to battle anxiety, how to battle uh, how, how to battle that confidence. That's hard. That's the hard part of wrestling. That mental part is hard. And um, I didn't figure that out until my senior year. And um, I had it in high school, and I kind of lost it in college. And I, and I gained it back. And um, I think it's, you can tell in wrestling that I gained it back. And um, I mean, yeah, just have more fun, worry less. Uh, yeah, don't don't. I don't really like think about wrestling too much when I'm outside of wrestling room. You know, I like to meditate a lot, so I put a lot. I like listen to a lot of music, and um, and it helps me. You know, it helps me uh build that confidence and whatever I'm feeling at the time. That music, whatever like the music helps me. So I guess I'll tell myself to listen to more music too. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it, 
I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, like, you know, life's good. So, so yeah. So right now, what's in the, uh, you know, what's in, what kind of music you have right now that you listen to? I mean, it depends. I, I can like, I can listen to uh, some music that will like hype me up. You know, I can listen to music that will like calm me down. And if I'm right before practice, I'm always listen, obviously listening to music that hypes me up. And um, after practice, you know, I just want, you know, I just go in my, after I eat dinner and stuff, you know, I just like to be alone a little bit. So um, it's some calm music, whatever it is. I don't really have a specific um, artist, you know, I just, my, my genre of music, like, like my music's everywhere, you know, I can listen to rap, I can listen to rock, country, all that stuff, you know, like whatever, you know, if the song is good, the song is good. Yeah. Pat Lugo joining us here from the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. He'll battle Matthew Kolodzik. Uh, that goes down on Sunday, November 1st. We'll have it right here on Trek Wrestling. I always like some rapid fire stuff, Pat. So I want to just fire off some questions to you. Coolest person you've ever met? Coolest person I ever met? Ooh. Michael Cameron. Okay. <laughs> what, what makes Kemmer so cool? Uh, he's, he's funny, man. He just... I don't know. He's just a funny dude. Honestly, that's what makes him cool. I think he's just camera. You know, he's not trying to be anyone else. He's just trying to be himself. That's. I think that's what's really cool. People try to be someone they're not. That's not cool. Whatever. Favorite sports team? Uh, Lakers for sure. So you got to be fired up. Another yeah, I got Kobe, Kobe right there. Rest in peace, Kobe. <laughs> Kobe sign. Yeah, that's my favorite athlete too. Actually. Okay, good deal. What is your most prized possession? Prize possession. Ooh. Um, I'm trying to look around my room. I don't even know. I mean, my phone probably. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, how, about, yeah. how about your proudest victory on the mat? Biggest uh, prize for you. Big Tens, for sure. Big Tens finals. You play video games? Yeah, I love video games. Mm -hmm. favorite, favorite video game? 2K, basketball. You were talking about music before. So here's another music question for you, Pat. Uh-huh. Who's a musical artist that you like, but you'd be too embarrassed to admit it? Oh. You seem like maybe you're a Barry Manilow guy behind the scenes, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. I don't, my favorite artist that I like that too best to admit. Uh, uh, Taylor Swift, maybe? I mean, I'll be honest. I like Taylor Swift. I think she's I mean, yeah, great. I, mean, I don't know if I can admit it. Probably like Lady Gaga or something oh, like that. Lady Gaga's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what was your first job growing up? I mean, I used to work at my – we used to have a store, and um, I used to work at my dad's store, and I used to hate that. So, yeah. And also, I, I also worked outside. We, my dad works at a nursery now, so I used to always go out there when I used to get in trouble. So he used to put me out there in the sun, and it was bad. But, yeah. Halloween coming up. What was your best Halloween costume as a kid? Uh, Spider-Man, for sure. Okay, there you go. Yeah. If you could be anybody for a day, who would it be? Uh, hmm. Dead or alive, or does that really matter? You know what? Go dead or alive, sure. Sheesh. Honestly, Kobe Bryant. Okay. Yeah. Last question I have for you is I, I know that you have a sister. Yeah. Who's the, who's the one guy on the team – that you would trust the most with your sister? Oh man, shit! I I could know who I, I know who I wouldn't trust for sure. <laughs> but like I know who mm, probably Caleb Young. Honestly, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. So Caleb Young. I'll tell you what I give I give Caleb Young some credit because you know marrying Tom Brand's daughter. I mean that's got to be uh, yeah, that's yeah. got to be a little that's got to be interesting. I mean Tom is great. I'm sure he's an awesome yeah. father-in-law. I don't doubt that at all. But it's still. Any way you slice it, it's still your head coach, and it's Tom Brands. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people make fun of him, but, man, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. <laughs> well, Pat, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, I appreciate the time, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to watching you throw down on November 1st against Kolodz. It should be a great match. Looking forward to watching it. Thank you. Appreciate you having me.